All right. Well, the next video in the series, number four. I think it's number four anyway. <laughs> Losing track. Trying to get this job done. Okay, I have now bolted off this steel beam. I'm using four inch by 12 mil uh, cup head bolts. The cup heads bite into the uh, timber. And the nut on the other end is on steel. There it is. Now I have my boys put the nuts on straight away. So what I've got in my bag, each bolt has a nut. So it just makes it easy rather than having it all separate. Okay, and then I can undo it, put them in as I, as I need to. But at least it's all together on the, in my nail bag. Okay, now, uh, as we drill that, of course, all the dirt that comes out of that hole ends up on the beam here. I do have a habit of cleaning off that beam, get rid of all that sawdust, because it's only a fire hazard. Sawdust burns a whole lot faster than what uh, timber hardwood bearers do, or pine bearers, whatever. Uh, sawdust burns a lot quicker. So, fire hazard, get rid of it. You don't need fire hazards inside a timber house. You want to lose as many as you can. So don't leave sawdust lying around. Anyway, they're in there. The jacks are still up. Uh, yeah, that steel beam is reasonably straight. Now, if you notice, I have a gap to the floor joist. All right. This one here, this steel beam here. I'll get on the end here. These are trying to balance. All right. Now, that's flush. They're both the same height, all right? The floor joists will eventually sink, sink down as they get weight. And remember, she's an old house. Sometimes you have to go upstairs with a block and a sledgehammer and give them a hit to knock them, knock them back down on the nails. Because as you get up there, you can see our bearer is five, four, not even, yeah, about five mil higher there than the steel beam. As we move along, it gets even higher in the middle and then it comes down again. So what we're going to do now is to slowly release these jacks. Frank, you want to grab the, oops, sorry. Grab these jacks, uh, echoes, so we will throw them all over the place. Get that jack to release. Jack down. On to the next one. Release that slowly, make sure we're not getting it cracking or not putting too much pressure on the next jack, which is that one is the dangerous one. And she's down and now onto this one. If you watch this thing straighten up. Oh look at that straighten up. Uh. A lot better. Uh, honestly, that one's down. And now, oh yeah, don't know if you can see that there, but uh, going from this side to that side, there's now close on a five to ten mil bend in that steel beam now, which wasn't there before. So now, because of that. Of course, in the middle, because it's 10 mil low, that 10 mil I've got the uh, timber up means that we should be reasonably flat up there, reasonably level, which is what we're after. And of course, the steel beam has now some downward weight on it, which reduces any bounce. So that steel beam is now working for us. It's pushing up the whole time the house is pushing down. So hopefully we reduce the bounce. I've got to do that on all those. Now this is something that most people don't do anymore. Okay, and you're wondering why your house is bouncy? That's the reason why, once it's been remade. If they haven't tensioned the beams, you have bounce. All right, doesn't mean you don't have bounce afterwards, but you sure have a lot less. Okay, depending on the weight of the house and the size of the steel beam. As you can see, that next bearer along, I hope you can see, I don't know if you can. That's got a nice bend in it. We've got to push that up and push it out. So piece by piece, as we get these beams up here, we push the beds up. Oh, you can see on that end of that beam, that floor joist has actually popped because of the, uh, the way things have been. She's popped off, so it's got to come down again. Same here, we've got a few of these. Most of these have popped. So we're going to jump upstairs with a sledge and knock those down once we put the pressure on. Get them back to where they're going to live. All right, just to give them a pop. But yeah, be careful. Make sure you're looking right. Oh, also, <laughs> while I'm at it, you see all these wires everywhere. Okay, they're the wires we pulled off the bearer that the electrician 
ages ago had attached to the barrel. We pulled them off out of the way. Now there's no electricity attached to this house because it's a total reno, but in some cases the electricity is still on. Good idea to turn it off if you can, but pull the wires off. Do not cut them. Pull them out of the way. Pin them up. I've got some nails holding them up so they're out of the way so we can do our work. Pin them up out of the way and you can have an electrician come through and re-secure them properly to legal standards uh, after you've finished. Alright, do not play with electricity. It's not fun. Uh, it tends to hurt. Uh, very rarely kills you, but the shock can, can put you into a cardiac arrest. Alright, uh, if you're in the States of course it's a little easier. It's only 120 volt. Over here it's 240 here in Australia. And 240 volt tends to hurt. I know, I've held on to it for quite some time. And, uh, 240 volt at 50 hertz tends to blow every single cell in your body apart, piece by piece over time. But what kills you is not the actual electricity in most cases. It's the fact that you're scared of it, you get a shock, and all, your uh, heart muscles go into shock and stop move, stop beating. Uh, like everything, experience... Uh, makes it easier <laughs> and means you don't get shocked so much uh, I've been belted so often over the last uh, 40 years uh, yeah it just hurts <laughs> but uh, that doesn't mean you should be playing with it don't listen to me okay electricity is dangerous most people are not used to getting belted when you do it quite often uh, can lead to cardiac arrest so do stay away from it have the wires removed uh, take them off pin them up Okay, they're quite safe providing they're still in their shield. All right, no problem at all. You can pull them off the bearer, pit them up, put them to the side, and reattach them uh, safely later, or have an electrician come through, which will happen here. Have an electrician come through uh, who's going to rewire the place more than likely and uh, put them up to legal standard. All right, that's enough rambling on for me. That beams in. We've got tension. Uh, if there's anything you need to know about that or want to double check on that, please. Uh, I will describe it again in further videos. Uh, I've got to get some work done there today, so I won't do another one on that today. But uh, have a look at it, go through it. If there is any uh, queries, please uh, text me you know, right at the bottom of the video. Uh, give me a phone call if you wish. Quite happy to uh, help explain it further on the phone. And uh, yeah, happy beam raising. Uh, put the beams up, fit your beams, bolt them off. Get tensioned. Don't just leave them sit there because all you do is get bounced. All right, guys. Catch you again soon. Oh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you do that. Okay. Trying to build a business here. Just hop on there, hit the subscribe button. Talk to you again soon. Love you. Bye.